As a science evidence-based fitness nutrition coach, aka Lord Peng, aka Phone Slapper, aka Fitness Ramen King, I now have fantastic, <sighs> exciting, hypertrophic antibody, anti-catabolic, biomechanically sound strengthening, promoting physiological growth, minimal adiposity through optimal nutrition that science supported evidence-based peer review meta-analysis are mechanically advantageous and superior. New spars. I now have a my protein code. Bang. Do you know how big that is? In the sea of misinformation with many social media influencers, charlatans and supplement companies that aren't even third party tested, making it very difficult to navigate your way through your own fitness and nutrition journey. And if you're like me and you came from a low income environment, you will know that it's really difficult to eat five steaks a day, eight eggs a day, while rocking the most high tech active way. But what kept me afloat was my protein. And I'm super stoked that I can now help you even more, making your fitness and nutrition journey that much easier Right, how do I do this? Do we tip the box? Or do we lay it out one by one? Uh, oh, be right back. Today, I'm only gonna be eating my protein products for 24 hours. I think I'm zombie apocalypse ready. The only thing that's not going to be my protein are fruits, sauces, condiments, and vegetables. Because nobody wants pancakes that's drier than Ganny's flip-flops and your crusty elbows. So moisturize your elbows. Anyways, my protein breakfast slash brunch slash pre-workout. Let's go. Next, we're going to add 16 grams of protein from the breakfast laid bar. My protein pancakes, no pun intended. Right, let's try this. So the protein pancake has been pretty much a training staple for me. Basically, pancakes are one of my favorite foods. Let me try the breakfast laid bars. 10 grams of fiber and 26 grams of protein for these bars. That is ridiculous ratios right there. By the way, the My Protein Syrup has no protein. Not like that I need any more. This is perfect timing because I'm currently power Olympic building, if that's a thing, which is a combination of power lifting, Olympic lifting, and bodybuilding. So in other words, maximizing strength, power, and hypertrophy. The reason I do all of those is because fitness is a celebration of what your body can do. And just like Bruce Lee said, having no style is a style, and every movement is an expression. Of yourself. If oneself cannot fully express themselves, then how would they ever reach their potential? Before I was running two half marathons a week, but because currently I'm also massive, as I continue to eat my protein pancakes, no pun intended, here are five protein myths that needs to die. Number one, protein causes kidney damage. This meta-analysis of 28 studies shows that changes in kidney function do not differ between those who consume a high protein diet compared with the low to medium. Two, consuming more protein automatically increases muscle mass. But you can't just feed what you need your muscles to grow. You also need to give them a reason to grow. To increase muscle mass, this requires resistance training. Muscle hypertrophy refers to the increase in muscle mass. Protein consumption alongside resistance training is a potent stimulus for muscle protein synthesis. Number three, you can't build muscle on plant-based protein. This meta-analysis of 16 studies demonstrated that there was a more favorable effect 
in lean mass when animal protein was consumed, especially in adults under the age of 50. However, if you're vegan, there is no problem gaining muscle mass and strength as long as you consume your protein from a variety of plant-based sources. You need to consume protein immediately after you work out. This has been proven false over the past years. Although consuming protein post-exercise is important, as muscles are sensitized to protein at least 24 hours after you have worked out. Remember, you're in this for the long term, not the short term. So enjoy life a little. Number five, protein powder is not food. Protein powders are food. They are food supplement. Supplements supplement your lifestyle. They are not a replacement. Whey protein specifically it's the concentrated protein that's the byproduct of milk. Without the carbs, without the fats, without the minerals, it's just protein. So please stop listening to these nonsense you hear on social media. Easy. Consuming a high protein pre-workout is more likely going to put you in a net positive balance over a period of time. When it comes to muscle hypertrophy, you want to be in a net protein balance. But before I go, it only makes sense to rock some my protein gums. Let's get it. But before we go for a workout, I'm feeling a bit peckish. So we're gonna be trying this while having a little Q&A. Because I'm Andy Sulek. These are the My Protein Hazelnut Whip. 5.2 grams of protein, 138 calories. There are six bars in there. They look like the Kinder Bueno. And they do. So question from Caden Kane. Super serious and very important question. Is cheesecake a cake or pie? Based on my personal opinion, cheesecake is a cake, hands down. If you think about pie, it has a crust. Then there's a filling, and then it has to be baked. Cheesecake doesn't have to be baked. A pie does not taste like a cake, but a cheesecake tastes like a cake. A cheesecake is not wrapped with a pastry dough and then baked. Cheesecake is a cake, hands down. What do you think? Any advice for starting over with working out after chemo? So this is not an area that I specialize in and you should consult with your doctor who will then refer you to an exercise cancer specialist. But in general, the worst thing you can do after chemotherapy or if you have cancer is to stay inactive. Current data suggests that chemotherapy does not worsen exercise tolerability. While most meta-analysis have emphasized on breast cancer, meeting the minimum guidelines for physical activity both before diagnosis and after treatment appears to be associated with statistically significantly reduced hazards of recurrence and mortality among breast cancer patients. Next, we try on the MyProtein Beef built on. One gram of carbs, 2.8 grams of fat, 135 calories. For those who don't know, this is an air dried seasoned sliced beef snack. That's a lot. This is great. I would definitely take these with me if I want something savory. Because so far, like I said, my protein do more than just supplement. Raggy369. Much love, brother. Also, can you make more recipes with organ meat? The purpose of my content is to help you navigate the sea of misinformation, but also demonstrating to you that balance is key to everything in life. I didn't know any of you are interested in organ meat. Organ meats are great. They have a great mineral composition. They are high in protein. In the Asian culture, we use a lot of organs in our dishes, which adds flavor, because at the end of the day, flavor is king. I will make some recipes, including the organ. Thank you for the question. Sakura. Sakura sad boy. Sakura sad boy. Favorite recipe for chicken bread? Fried chicken. Fried chicken, hands down. Taiwanese volcanic fried chicken, or any Taiwanese fried chicken. Taiwanese fried chicken popcorn, katsu chicken, curry. Basically, anything fried is my favorite recipe when it comes to chicken bread. But for a someone who's looking to reduce their calories, hey, I'll say Hainese chicken. Steamed black bean chicken. Basically, chicken is the king of protein. You know what, I'm gonna bring out more recipes, so just let me know what you want to see in the comments. Beef biltong, barbecue flavor. 26 grams of protein, carbohydrates, two grams, fat, two drops, seven grams. Pretty much the same. Just dried beef. It's Peng Lenguin still. Cheech. Noza. Cheech Noza. If I pronounced any of your names wrong, just correct me in the comment section. Even just a single egg a week may increase the risk of diabetes. Is this a fact? 
Absolutely not. It's important to identify which type of diabetes they are referring to. In a caption it says type 2. One of the primary drivers of type 2 diabetes is excess calories, aka calorie surplus. Consume in more calories than your body requires. No foods directly cause type 2 diabetes. That is just some phone slapping. Bollocks. Furthermore, this meta-analysis including over 2 million individuals showed no conclusive evidence of the consumption of eggs and cardiovascular disease. So eat your eggs. No more than two eggs a day if you're moderately active. Thank you for your question. I hope that cleared some of the misinformation. These are great, especially if your overall diet is low in sodium intake. It's highly unlikely if you're adding a lot of salt to your cooking, seasonings, etc, etc. Okay, let's get ready for the gym. How to put on your lifting straps, let's go. First you want to get a pair of lifting straps, cotton or leather for comfort. Then you want to wriggle your toe socks for anabolic super saiyan powers. Then for your right hand, look for the natty hole. Don't worry, you'll find it one day. Put the end of the strap into the hole and slide through. Put your hands through the roid hole and pull. The strap should end up in between your thumbs and index finger, in the direction of your right thumb. Then you want to repeat on your left hand. Both of your straps should now end up in the direction of your majestic thumbs. Then you want to wriggle your toe socks to charge up your chakras. With your palms facing up, place the strap underneath the bar. Wrap the excess strap around the bar and twist. You can use the other hand to hold it in place. Then you want to repeat on the other side using only one hand. Use your fingers and thumbs if you know what I mean. Now the bar should feel secure. Then get on your knees and pray that the love of your life marries you for washing your rice. Now that Uncle Roger approves, you can now increase the volume of your Romanian deadlifts. Use wrist straps for lift that's 80 to 90% of your one rep max and all your heavy pulls like the lap pull down. To unloosen the straps, just open your hand. Follow for more fitness and toe socks. Welcome to England, where it's pitch black. Anyways, be right back. Let's cook. Before I cook, I'm gonna try these My Protein Thai Sweet Chili Crisps, or chips if you're a psycho. 99 calories with 11 grams of protein, 4.7 grams of fiber, and a half pack of air. I never really understood why. They look kind of like pop chips. That's pretty good. First ingredient, soy crisp. Soy protein, 64%. Tapioca starch, soy fiber, sunflower oil, Thai sweet chili seasoning. Basically, protein pop chips. I'm gonna snack on these while I'm cooking. The My Protein Oat Flapjack, chocolate flavor. 
Each of these have 20 grams of protein. Can you see that? I mean, it doesn't look like a regular flat cake. It's not, it's not like your usual flapjack, you know, like the ones you get in Morrison's or Tesco's. I mean, it's edible. Question from Dab.10000. Wanting to start getting active again, where do you recommend to start? So thanks for asking. But if you're wanting to get active for weight loss, I suggest increasing your daily steps plus work on your nutrition. Additionally, if it's strength and muscle, I suggest starting with a body weight slash calisthenics program in order to build your foundational strength and confidence and you learn how your body works, you can then move on to the next step. Go to the gym or get yourself a pair of dumbbells and start from there. And, and the third is be careful who you follow on social media because there are many charlatans and influencers that are preying on your insecurities. And then from there, if you still need additional guidance, you can apply through my one-on-one -on -one online coaching or online consultation package to help guide you through the process and to give you the tools for you to be able to do it yourself. So with that being said, mm. High protein jajangmyeon. For those who don't know, jajangmyeon is a popular Korean Chinese dish. Never thought there'll be a day when there exists a high protein jajangmyeon. As a reminder, the anabolic window is a myth. Ling Ling Gwen still. So there's this misconception that there's a certain amount of protein that you can digest in one sitting. Hypothesis states that the body can only metabolize 20 to 25 grams of protein. However, some of it will be utilized for other tissue building purposes. The key is to maximize anabolic responses as well as anabolic adaptation. Good stuff. Now we're gonna review some of my protein sweet treats while having a little Q&A. Me and you. First up we have the My Protein Extra Lean Cookie. 38 grams of protein. 12 in each box. Rocky Road. Does this look like a cookie to you? Let me know in the comments. Okay, taste test. Cheers. It's like, it's dry. Secondly, it doesn't have a cookie texture. And that is definitely way too thick to be a cookie. It's like very gummy. I think I'm gonna pass on that. This is the only thing that I've passed up today. My protein bars match flavor. I have been wanting to try this. Whew. 
Each bar contains 20 grams. Just like all the other layered bars. Cheers. This is what the layers look like. Taste matcher. Looks like Rice Krispies on the top. They're called soy nuggets. I'll probably give it about 5.5 out of 10. Definitely more edible than Aldi's. Do not try Aldi's protein bars, I beg. A question from Rapun Bird. Rapun Bird. I appear to have unknowingly bolt and wondered your tips on cutting. Well, first things first. What do you mean by bulk? Do you mean gaining muscle, gaining weight, gaining muscle and fat? If you've unknowingly bulked, then you've been in a calorie surplus. You've overconsumed the calories that you burn. So first thing to do on the cut is put yourself in a calorie deficit. While there are no particular foods that make you gain weight, there are some foods that you have to prioritize during the cut to make the process much easier. So begin by calculating your caloric maintenance and begin eating in the deficit, no, no more than 200 less calories for sustainable weight loss. And one of the things you have to prioritize is protein. Protein is the key macronutrient that preserves lean mass. When you lose weight, you lose muscle and fat. So when you cut, you want to preserve your muscle and lose the body fat. So I tried a 10,000 calories challenge. I create content with the purpose of helping you navigate the sea of misinformation of charlatan influencers. With a science evidence-based approach, making fitness and nutrition more fun, sustainable and balanced. Basically, I'm just here to bring balance to Belen. Next, we have this gooey field cookie. 20 grams of protein. Also, fitness is not synonymous with bodybuilding. Fitness is a celebration of what your body can do. Gooey field cookie. 20 grams of protein. I have a lot of protein today. It's not like I had way too much protein today. You get me? I mean, it's too thick to be a cookie. Chocolate chip. It doesn't have that cookie texture. It's more edible. It's more edible than the other cookie. This is the gooey field. It's not something, I'll, it's not really my thing. It's quite doughy because of its thickness. The ones I'm gonna pass, I'm just gonna eat half. Awesome, we, here's another gooey filled cookie. I will always give honest, non-biased reviews. Just like the goal of science. The goal of science is non-bias. Honesty and authenticity is key mm. to being human. Again, it's very thick and rubbery. Very doughy. It tastes more like a brownie than it is a cookie. It's just very doughy. There's no way I can eat the white gold layered bars. What even is a white gold? Two layers of protein with caramel layer of soy nuggets and robe with white chocolate flavor coating. Top with caramel flavor, golden white chocolate curls with sugar and sweetener. For those who needs to hear this, Currently, no conclusive evidence that artificial sweetness have a negative impact or positive impact on your health. Plus, type 1 diabetics consume both sugar and artificial sweeteners because it saves their lives. As backed up by multiple meta-analysis. Okay, I think we're gonna call that a night. Hope you found this video informative, valuable, and fun. And as always, please abuse my link and code FVNGFANG for extra discount on top of my protein 
sale. I'm Andy Fang, a science evidence-based fitness nutrition coach, aka Faux Slapper, aka Fitness Ramen King, aka Lord Peng. Helping you navigate the sea of information with hyperspinibody, anticatabolic, biomechanically sound strengthening, promoting physiological growth with minimal adiposity through optimal nutrition, a science-supported evidence-based peer review meta-analysis that's mechanically advantageous and superior. Facts. No printer. For more science, evidence-based fitness and nutrition and myth debunking and food, please click here. If not, subscribe for more no bullshit science, evidence-based fitness and nutrition content plus food or not because I ain't your daddy.